Hello YouTube and Happy New Year in 2017. So today's video is going to be on God's foreknowledge and human free will. Now I think this is a major topic that puts people off many of being a Christian or in any religion whatsoever because they think if God knows everything, past, present and future events, then no matter, no matter what I choose it was fated to happen and that it was going to happen no matter what I choose. In other words, humans have no free will because God knows the future. And I'm going to show in this video that this is not true. And that this has been troubling me as well today as well. So I was trying to do some research and find some analogies and find some analogies to show why this why this isn't true and, and maybe shed some light on God's perspective of, of time and space and how humans and, and how human free will is compatible with his view of time. Okay, now first, we have to establish two facts. Uh, two, uh, number one is that God knows everything, past, present, and the future, in one, not in one timeline, but also as if it's the present, so he views the present as the present, the past as the present, and the future as the the present so it's like time is an illusion to him it doesn't matter he's eternal he's timeless time is not a thing to him and also the second one is that humans have free will that god gifted humans free will to choose whatever they want to do and that and that god does not control humans like puppets so now that we've established those two facts that god knows everything and that humans have free will we'll now move on to the video so the first thing that I want to establish is that God's foreknowledge or God knowing an event before it happens, God knowing everything, is not the same as foreordination or God or an event that's foreordained to happen, that it's fated to happen and that like fate is sealed and that no matter what you do, that event will come to pass no matter what. I want to establish that these two things are not the same thing. So in order to I'm going to now uh, go over some analogies that might help explain God's perception of time. So the first one is that there are supposedly in, I think it's string theory, I'm not quite sure what it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are ten, apparently there are ten dimensions of space-time, then there are ten dimensions of space, and um, two I'm going to focus on now is the fifth and the, and the highest one is the tenth dimension. So the first one the fifth dimension is there are multiple timelines, so or multiple worlds, parallel universes, no matter, you can call it whatever you want. And so this might help explain some people's, this might, exp might explain God's view of foreknowledge or God's view of future events. And that no matter what happens, it doesn't surprise God. It was that when, whatever timeline is picked by the humans, free will choice that these events will play out based on what will happen because God knows us intimately so well he knows our thoughts before they happen because he knows us so well past present and future he knows us intimately so well he knows exactly what will happen so let's uh, let's do an analogy here we have two possible timelines say you can either choose vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream now if we go with the first one, so vanilla ice cream, God, if, because God can see all these multiple timelines happening at once, because he can see the past, present and the future all at the same time, if you chose vanilla ice cream, he knows exactly how you're going to eat it, the exact thoughts of how that is going to happen, and, but you still chose that vanilla ice cream, or, you can choose the chocolate ice cream and he knows exactly how you're going to eat it, your exact thoughts and how long you're going to take to eat it, i.e. All, all that stuff. So it's not like God, uh, it's not like God has said you're going to eat vanilla ice cream no matter what happens or about your fated to eat chocolate ice cream or your fated to eat, fated to eat vanilla ice cream. What happens is that, okay, so this is God's sitting there hmm okay this is the past present and future event so he looks at he's looking into the future oh and then the human he sees two possible events the human chooses either 
the human can either choose vanilla ice cream or the chocolate ice cream from the ice cream man and he said and the human has chosen vanilla ice cream and so therefore because of his foreknowledge he knows exactly what's going what the humans will freely choose to do then what he will freely choose to think in that timeline but ultimately it's the human who's choosing to do to think that the t to think those things think of him like looking at think of it as viewing the timeline like a cinema like god is the cinema of the person viewing the film and that you the human are the actor in the film uh playing the events out so that's how he knows but he's viewing them as like the film strip so every, each and every frame so that's how he's viewing it but ultimately he's just an observer and that he has no control over the events but i'll get to that in a minute and also that but then there's another explanation of the tenth dimension which is that anything and everything is possible so no matter what time so no matter any possible combination of timelines events or anything is possible and it won't surprise god because he, he'll know exactly what will happen in each of these sort of combinations and because he knows each human so well, he'll know it into the very last detail from the thoughts, the position of the atoms, to how you speak, and all that jazz. He knows everything. And I'll, I'll link in the description. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description as well. But I'll go over some other analogies that might help as well. So there's the barometer analogy. So a barometer is like, it has, if you know pressure, so the higher the pressure, the more likely it is to be sunny. And the lower the pressure is, the more likely it is to be wet and windy. So think of God as the <clears throat> think of God as the barometer and the weather as humans' free will. So whenever the weather comes, i.e., uh, human free will, whatever it chooses to do, that will influence the barometer or where it will point. And think of the markings as future events that will happen because of humans' free will to do to choose an event. So God being the barometer needle, okay, so pointing to this event, therefore, because the humans have decided to do this event, um, that this this future event will happen, but it can change depending on what humans choose to do. And remember, because he's timeless, he can view in any time period from 1 to 5 seconds, 1 to 15 minutes, 1 to 15 hours, it, he can choose how big the barometer time scale is if that makes sense and the future events and, the, and then the markings would be the future events that would happen within that time period per se because and then because he's timeless he can view time as one as one thing and it's always continuing be and you know it's the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning sorry okay and also the final analogy is a person's shadow so you have your shadow being God's foreknowledge of a future event that's going to happen, and then the person's physical body as their their human free will. So the human, so the humans made a free will choice, and then God's saying, okay, because the humans made this free will choice, therefore this is going to happen. God's foreknowledge says, i.e., the person's shadow in the scenario this is going to happen and because humans move their body and so therefore the, the shadow changes its shape as well as you may know with shadow puppets or just do maybe you've done like try to do animals with your hands because the shadows are always changing i.e god's foreknowledge is always changing because the humans are always making choices and therefore nothing surprises god when you make a decision make when you make a decision but also so therefore this negates the reason why that no one is ultimately destined to go to born to go to hell or heaven that based on your choices that can constantly change that can constantly change that's why god has plans for any sort of event that may happen that may help with the 10th dimension explanation or the 5th dimension explanation multiple timelines and so on no matter what choice you make it won't surprise God, he'll always have a plan for it no matter what you choose. So ultimately, at the end of the day, your fate is not sealed, that humans have free will, and that God's foreknowledge is just him knowing future events. 
is his, his, his him knowing future events before they happen, but it's just because of his perspective that he views the future as the present. Therefore, he knows the present before it happens. But ultimately, it's him, think of him as an observer going into the present and then viewing the humans. Think of him as a time traveler going into the future and him viewing the, the future humans making the, making the future choices. Him, him going into the future and him observing the humans freely choosing what they deserve, what they cho they're choosing to do, but ultimately has no impact on it whatsoever, unless of course he, he decides to intervene, you know, via miracles and so on, and prayers from Christians. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below, and I'll put some links in the descriptions that may help you further your understanding. Bye.